It's another episode of Butt Crack Cycles, and today we're just going to kind of sit out here in the shop and talk for a couple of minutes. And I want to talk about just like some nomenclature, like some words that we use in Harley Land to describe old bikes. And as you can see, I'm sitting between two motorcycles, an Evo Sportster and an Ironhead Sportster. And while in many ways these bikes are very similar, in many other ways they are very different from each other. This isn't a video about Evos versus Ironheads, though that might actually be a fun uh, video to make now that I say it. This is really just a difference between what I would consider a vintage Harley and an old school Harley. So let's break it down and talk about those two sort of categories and how I personally define them. So let's start with just kind of like old school. This red bike sitting right here is a 2001. To me, that's a pretty new bike. 2001 doesn't feel like that long ago, but you know, that's over 20 years ago. A lot of people look at this bike and have wrote comments on my channel saying, hey, that's a cool old school Harley. And when I first started hearing stuff like that about this bike, I was like, oh man, like, you're wrong, that's not an old school Harley, this is a new bike. But I've kind of stopped and thought about this a little bit more, and I actually think that these people are right. This is an old school bike. And we'll talk about why in just a minute. The Ironhead, on the other hand, is 1983. And this is a motorcycle that I would consider vintage, or a classic. Um, I'm not really going by any like haggardy definitions of how things fall because I know there's like antique and classic and vintage and, and there's all these organizations that do shows and insure and register vehicles that classify stuff different ways. This is just how Paul sees it. So what makes this bike an old school bike, this 2001 Sportster? It's simple. That's really all it boils down to. Up until 03, Sportsters were rigid mounted. And after that, they became rubber mounted, and then they gained fuel injection. And I don't want to sound like just this crusty old curmudgeon. I really like fuel injection. I have a pretty complex fuel injection system that I have installed onto my 79 Mercury Zephyr. That's a whole different, you know, ball game though. Um, I think what constitutes an old school bike, what makes this bike old school, and other bikes from this era, the late 90s, early 2000s. So we're talking Evo Sportsters, 03 and earlier, and then like Evo Engine Big Twins, is that these were bikes kind of still made by a guy named Jim who liked drinking Coors Banquet, and then they were bought and ridden and maintained by a guy's named Jim who worked a blue collar job and liked drinking Coors Banquet. You know, these are simple motorcycles. They're really good bikes. In many ways, objectively speaking, the old school bikes, the Evo engine bikes, are better than the vintage bikes, shovel heads, iron heads, pan heads, knuckle heads, etc. A lot of people would probably argue sort of that, that era of Harley, like the 90s into the early 2000s, is like the pinnacle of Harley design and production. Because these were motorcycles that were still carbureted, oftentimes still, you know, very simple to maintain and very simple to work on. There wasn't a ton of wiring on them. Many of them didn't have all sorts of crazy features. There weren't any computer modules to go bad. Really the most complicated things on these bikes were something like an automatic turn signal canceling module or an electronic ignition module. And the aftermarket for them is huge. And if you really want to, you can take one of these Evo bikes and make it sort of look and be a little bit older if, if you really want to. You can put kickstarts on an Evo Sportster. I don't know why you would, but people do it. And for me, that sort of sums up what an old school Harley is. It's like 86 to maybe 2001, 2, 3, somewhere in that neighborhood. The Evo engine bikes sportster or big twin that were still classic looking harley wasn't trying to be something that they're not they're simple bikes they're easy to work on they weren't too terribly expensive to buy harley hadn't started this big push with 
brings us to where we're at now in Harley Davidson land, and all they want to sell is $35,000 baggers, and they just want to sell these, you know, lazy boy couches on wheels with Bluetooth and GPS and hands-free this and these the heated grips and heated seats and just all of this crap that you don't need, in my opinion, on a motorcycle. So what makes an old school bike different than something like this bike right here? This is a 1983 Ironhead Sportster. And this is a bike that I would consider vintage. And while we're talking about the word vintage, let's go ahead and define it. I would say a vintage Sportster is 85 and older, any Ironhead. And a vintage Big Twin, I would say, is shovelhead and older. So in 84, you could get a shovel or an Evo, but I would say the Evos, I don't know, an 84 Evo, maybe that's a vintage bike. But really, shovelhead, panhead, knucklehead, etc., big twins. And I kind of want to talk about just kind of what makes a vintage bike actually vintage. You know, if you have, for example, like an 86 Sportster and an 85 Sportster parked right next to each other, those bikes basically have the same chassis underneath them, and a lot of your other components, wheels and brakes and controls are the same. And I would consider the 86 bike kind of an old school bike, and the 85 bike would be what I would consider a vintage bike. Why do I make that break at that year model? Simply because of the difference between Evo engine and Ironhead engine. Well, for me, it's more than just like how old something actually is. I'm sure if you went to someone like Haggerty, or even if you were registering an 85 or an 86 in your state, you could probably get a classic plate on either one. They don't care that one has an Evo engine and one has an Ironhead engine. And the same thing with a Big Twin. If you were registering like an 84 Super Glide versus an 86 Super Glide or 85, whatever, you know, one has a shovel and one has an Evo, you can still get a classic plate on either one. So why do I draw that distinction? Like why, why is the engine that's in it so important to me as defining it as a vintage bike. I think for me it really just boils down to like the the base architecture of that bike. You know, iron heads came out in the 50s, I think it's 57, and shovel heads came out in 65, but like 65 to 68, a generator shovel, a slab side shovel, is basically just a pan head bottom end with a different top end on it. That basic architecture for the shovel head engine is very, very, very similar to the pan head engine that came out in like 47 or 48, whenever it was. And even though this bike is an 83, it's a really late iron head, and yes, it is different than, say, a 63, the core of this bike still kind of reaches back into the 50s and 60s and it just feels so much different than something that's only a couple years newer than it. And I think that's really the meat and potatoes of it for me. That when you get on a true vintage bike, whether it's an 80s bike, a 70s bike, 60s, 50s, whatever, I know that there's people who will say, oh, 80s bike or AMF bike isn't a real vintage Harley, and I would tell them to go kick rocks. When you get on anything that's pre-Evo, it's a whole different world. The noises that they make, and the sounds, and the clatter, and just that chorus of all the mechanical components working together to, to make the noise that's coming out of the tailpipe and make that rumble underneath you that shakes the whole bike and pushes you down the road every time you twist the throttle and, and maybe leaves your arms feeling a little numb and the front tire's trying to jump off the ground at a stoplight and everything's just kind of shaking and you can't see out of your mirrors because they're just kind of a constant blur. You don't get that on an Evo. I don't care if it's rigid mounted or not, you just don't get that on an Evo. I can't quite put, you know, a finger on it, but there's just kind of a pulse that runs through these older bikes. It sounds really cheesy and it sounds really cliche to say that an inanimate mechanical object uh, kind of has some soul to it, but I do think there is a little bit of truth to that statement. And um, I, I don't know, there's something a little bit romantic almost to me about owning a vintage bike you know you 
it's you and that bike together. You have to work together. You have to be a mechanic to own one of these bikes or just be independently wealthy, which I am not. And I would imagine anyone watching this channel is not. And I think a lot of that feeling of just the character of these old bikes kind of comes from the era in which they were made. You know, like these were bikes that were made in a, in a time in America where the understanding was if you bought one of these, you were going to get your hands dirty. This was a pack that you made with this motorcycle. You don't just own it, you're its caretaker, you're its custodian. You're working together to go down the road because one of these takes a lot of maintenance and time and you got to get a set of wrenches and a shop manual and it's still true today but it was true even when these bikes were brand new. And I think somewhere along the lines, just kind of as the American, you know, populace, we've drifted away from that. People want to just go buy something and, and just ride it. They don't want to have to work on it. They don't want to have to put the sweat equity into it. They don't want to own a shop manual. They don't want to own any tools. And they'll complain and, and bitch and moan about, oh, well, they make them so you can't work on them anymore. Maybe it's true to some extent. But many people just don't want to work on them. I know I've kind of been rambling, but every time I get on this bike or any other vintage Harley, those motorcycles to me genuinely feel like a, a, a tangible mechanical connection into our past and into history. It sounds a little cheesy, but you know, they don't make them like they used to. They don't make this stuff anymore. And and I, I feel very strongly, you know, that it's important to keep this stuff alive. It's important to keep these old bikes on the road. They're not just disposable pieces of transportation. These are, you know, important pieces of American mechanical industrial history. And cultural history as well you know vintage harleys have this huge place in american culture good or bad and i love being a part of that and i i love you know turning wrenches on these things and i love riding them so for me while yes i will admit that an evo is probably a better bike for someone who just wants to get on it and ride it and still have something that's old school cool hands down Every single time, I will take the vintage bike. And I know I might be on the side of the road every once in a while, and I'm probably gonna have to crack open that shop manual twice as much, and I'm gonna get dirtier, and I'm gonna spend more time in the shop than I would with an Evo bike. But I don't even care. It's all totally worth it for me. Okay, I think I've gotten everything off of my chest as far as what I wanted to say about that. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Leave your thoughts below. What do you ride? What do you want to see more of on this channel, etc.? Do I suck and you hate me? I don't care either way. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Bye.